Creo Parametric 11 has full multi-body support in sheet metal, and that has some repercussions on conversion operations. Let's take a look at that. Here I have a part model. I'm going to expand my design items folder. There are 13 bodies in this part. The default body is body one, and it is empty. It doesn't have any solid geometry in it. Let's convert this part to sheet metal. I will go to the operations overflow menu. Here is the convert to sheet metal command. And by default, it wants to convert the default body, in this case, body one, and it is using the empty body option. I'm going to cancel out of here. I'm gonna change my default body. I want it to be this big part of the computer case. I'm gonna use my selection filter to go to body and then select this body. And from the mini toolbar, I can choose to set this as the default body. Now let's go to operations, convert to sheet metal, and it is using the driving surface option. Let me select this surface as the driving surface, and it automatically detects the thickness for this part. You can choose which surfaces that you want to include or exclude. From the options tab, you can choose how you want to treat adjacent rounds and chamfers. You can recreate them, remove them, or ignore them. And you have the option to keep not classified surfaces as a quilt. I'll mention that in a moment. Let's hit the check mark. And when I do that, I get a warning in here. It says highlighted surfaces cannot be classified as one of the following. And it lists a bunch of different things, but that's okay. I can still click the okay button and it ends up creating my sheet metal body. Let's take a look at the new preferences that you have in Creo 11. I'm going to right click on this body and then from the pop-up menu, we can choose preferences and it opens up a dialog box and it shows that we have body eight and there's this little chain icon to indicate that this body is linked to the part settings. You can see that thickness is grayed out over here. I can go to the sheet metal, convert the name of the model, and here we have the thickness for this particular part. And you also have tabs in here for bend allowance, bend, relief, seam, and miter cut. So these are the different part level parameters and settings. If I click on the body in here, well, we can see that we have the same tabs in here, but these different values are linked to the parts parameters. Let me click OK out of here. And now I'm gonna select one of the parts, one of the bodies that has a different thickness so we can see the effect. Let me grab this body over here and I will use the right mouse button to get to the convert to sheet metal command. Once again, it is using driving surface. Let me select a surface from the part. This time it is using a thickness of 0.3. Let me hit the check mark in order to complete this. Yes, it gives that warning again about classified surfaces or surfaces that are not classified, but it still creates my sheet metal body. Let me go back to body eight. By the way, this was body 10. It is automatically set as the default but you can right click on any of the sheet metal bodies and go to preferences. And we see that body 10 is linked as well. Although it's got the different thickness because it is driven by the geometry and by the convert feature. But here we can go to the top node and it is now listing the thickness for the part as 0.3 for new geometry. Let me click the OK button out of here, and I'm just going to convert one more. Let's grab this part here, right mouse click, and then convert to sheet metal, and pick our driving surface, hit the check mark, and once again, I can right click on one of the sheet metal bodies, and then go to the preferences, and if I go to the top node, hey, now it's using the thickness of 0.8 from the latest body, the default body. And here we have the other bodies that are linked to the parts parameters. But let me move this aside. You can choose to unlink from the part. And we get a warning in here. 
part parameters are currently driving this design. When you unlink the body from the part, features will instead point to the body parameters. After unlinking, linking the body back to the part will still leave features pointing to the body parameters. And so I recommend some things about verifying family table relations parameters and so on. I am going to click yes. And in this case now, it is saying that the properties are derived. So you can be linked, unlinked, or derived. Derived results from certain operations, I think like copy and split, will end up with a derived body. And I can go and if I click on here, you can see that the values here are still grayed out. Let me click the apply button and it actually changed some of the different settings in here because it is unlinked. Let's click the OK button. And last one to show in this part before I jump to a, another model, let's take a look at some of those different body parameters. In this case here, I will select this particular body and then hold down the right mouse button. Here are parameters. And we can see that we have the various different body parameters for the different values in here. Again, most of this is grayed out uh, from being able to be changed because of the first wall that was created in there. Okay, let's click the OK button in order to close out of there. Let me switch over to another part to show you another method for conversion. And I've just found that working with multi-body and sheet metal in Creo 11 actually gets really, really fun, especially when you're using these master model techniques. So here I have my part and I just have this one main body and I used essentially this part in another video for showing how to create multiple different bodies. I'm gonna do things in a slightly different way with the same part. And so I've got my main body over here. Let me left click on it and then I will make it transparent. And I have a couple of quilts in here that I'm going to use to break up this body into multiple different bodies and then convert it to sheet metal. But first I'm going to take this body and I'm going to copy it just so I have a reference for my initial master model. So I will select the body and then I can choose copy and then paste and hit the check mark out of the body copy dashboard. So now I've got body two over here. Let me take body one and first I'm gonna rename it. I can right click and choose rename. And here's a nice little enhancement in Creo 11. I'm gonna type in ref and I'm so used to using underscores but I can just use a space now and type in body and it's automatically going to put the underscore in there for me. So I've got my reference body and let's hide it. I'm just gonna keep it around for future use. Let me select body two and make it transparent. Now I'm gonna start breaking this up so I can convert to sheet metal. So let me left click on the body and then right from here I can go to split trim body. And for my splitting object, I will select this quilt. In another video, I showed how I changed the option to prefer the selection of quilts over individual surfaces. So I like that. Let me turn off the extend splitting object. And this is good. I'm gonna flip the direction in order to break off that small piece. So that's good. Let me hit the check mark. So now I've got a, another body in here. I'm not gonna use this one in this video, but it is there for my reference. Let me grab that surface and hide it because I no longer see it. And let's take this body and break it up again. I will left click on it and then go to the split. And then for my splitting object, let me query select to this quilt. And let's see, let's flip the direction. I'm gonna break out the front part into a new body. Let's hit the check mark. And I'm gonna hide body for for a moment. So now I've got this body. Oh, let me hide my quilt surface, my surface that I used for the split. And so now I can take this and I can convert it to sheet metal. Let's go to this body and I will set it as the default body. And now I can go to operations, convert to sheet metal. And it is using the driving surface option, but I'm actually gonna shell this. And here we have a thickness that we can specify and I'm gonna use a value of two. And I just want three of the surfaces in here. So I'm actually gonna turn off 
a bunch of the different surfaces. Let's see, don't want that one. And I'm query selecting to the bottom surfaces. So I just want these three walls for my sheet metal part. So that's good. I will left click on here. And then later on, I can use the conversion tool in order to put some bends on the sharp edges. Actually, let's take a look at that. Let's go to conversion and then go to make some edge bends. And I'm going to select this edge and this edge. And let me change the thickness to two times the thickness and then hit the check mark. So and then hit the middle mouse button to complete my conversion feature. So now I've got that sheet metal body created. I like that. Let's see. Let's go to body four and I'm going to make it visible. And I always like to make it transparent, just a little easier to see things. And I actually want to create two different sheet metal bodies out of this one. So once again, I'm going to select this body and then copy and then paste it and then hit the check mark. Let's hide body five for now. And then let's create a, another sheet metal body out of this one. So this time I'll select it and then right mouse click and then go to convert to sheet metal. And let's shell this. And last time I used a thickness of two. I'm going to change it to the same thickness. Let's use a thickness of two. And for the removed surfaces, well, I don't want that surface. I'm just going to select a bunch out of here. I'm just going to create some of the vertical walls. And let's see. Oh, I don't want this pocket surface. I don't want that one over there. So yeah, I'm just having three different walls in this one. And so there I have my value of two. I will hit the check mark. Now let's start taking a look at the different preferences in here. Oops, looks like I included one wall that I did not want to. Let's go back and edit definition. And then for my remove surfaces, let me query select to this one. There we go. That is good. Uh, so let's go to our preferences now. I'll right click and then go to preferences. And so here we have the top node, which is the name of the part. And I've got my thickness and the other different tabs with my part level parameters. Here's body two, its values are linked. And since this body, since I used the same thickness on the shell feature, it automatically assumes that these should be linked to the part as well. So that's why that one has a linked value. Let's click the OK button out of here and let me use body five to create another one. Let me hide body four for a moment. And so let's convert this one to sheet metal. And once again, I will use the shell option, but I'm going to use a different thickness this time. Let's use a thickness of three. And for my removed surfaces, once again, I'm going to have to pick a bunch of them in here. I, I just want basically the pocket. And let's see that bottom surface. And so one more I need to get rid of, query select to the back. And so now I just have this particular pocket. Let's hit the check mark. And so now I've got my new sheet metal body. Let's go to our preferences once more. And you'll see that this one is not linked. It's not derived. It's got its own thickness value here. It's got its own properties that I can specify. So again, because I used a different thickness, it is automatically unlinked from the part level parameters uh, that were set up by the first conversion. So let's click the OK button out of here. You can change the thickness from there if you want. Let me bring back that one other body in here. So there you have it. Those are some of the effects of conversion and full multi-body support in sheet metal in Creole Parametric 11.